In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. I want to introduce uh, Deacon Will Stever is now with us, be with us through the summer. Many of you know that uh, Andel name. We uh, gathered to celebrate Pentecost, which is the end of the Easter season. 50 days ago, we were at Easter. You weren't here. 50 days ago, you were in your homes. We were not yet at public mass. It was a very sad Easter, worst Easter I ever had. Uh, talking to a camera. It's been uh, quite, a, quite an Easter season. If there's ever a time in our church's history where we need a fresh start, a new beginning, uh, this is it. A new start for our church, uh, for our country. Uh, we're mindful of, of all the violence that's happening in our country. Uh, one of the titles that the Holy Spirit has given is Comforter, and we need comfort. Families need comfort. Our nation, our world needs comfort. And so we pray uh, for the outpouring of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. To prepare us to celebrate more worthily, we acknowledge our need for God and our sinfulness. So we ask for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify the whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of your Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the grace, divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, and they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Edomites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and districts of Libya, near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, 
both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the, of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord send, send out, out your spirit and, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, Lord send, send out, out your spirit and renew, renew the, face the face of the, of the earth. earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord, may the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face, face of, of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send, send out, out your spirit, spirit and renew the, renew the face, face of the earth. Of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifest manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Pentecostal sequence. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come source of all our store. Come within our bosom shine, you of comforters the best, you, the soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat. Solace in the midst of woe. O oh, most blessed, light divine. Shine within these hearts, hearts of yours. In our inmost being filled. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good indeed or thought. Nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strict our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray, on the faithful who adore, and confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend, give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end, amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Praise you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. 
My name is Deacon Will Stever. You can just call me Deacon Will, that'd be fine. I was just ordained a deacon on May 21st, uh, two Thursdays ago, and I am happy to be spending my summer here at St. Catherine of Siena. One of the things that I'm excited for to be here is to get to know each of you. In order to make that a little easier, I'll share a little bit about myself. Like Father mentioned, I was born and raised in Andale. I have four sisters. My parents and my youngest sister still live in Andale. Thanks be to God, all four of my grandparents are still living in Andale. I am a Stever on my dad's side and a Richenberger on my mom's side, so I'm very used to big families. And if you want to know about my personal interests, I'd love to talk about that anytime. But the most important thing about me, the very core of my identity, is that I am a Catholic Christian. I have been baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The most important thing about me is that I am a member of something much greater and larger than I am. And here we see a great mystery of our faith. We become most perfectly ourselves when we are members of the church. There is a great balance between giving yourself up totally and maintaining your individuality. This is so because when we become members of the church, when we are baptized, we partake in Christ's death. We become something new, something we were not before, a member of the body of Christ. And in our baptism, the Holy Spirit comes down upon us, the same Holy Spirit who came down upon the apostles at Pentecost in the upper room. Who is this Holy Spirit? I'm sure everyone in here would be able to say that the Holy Spirit is God. But what does that mean? Why did Jesus have to ascend into heaven? Why couldn't he just stay among us in his resurrected body? I know that Jesus did not abandon us. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. And he sent us the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit whom he sent is not another God. The Holy Spirit is God himself, as Jesus is God, as the Father is God. There is a distinction between the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father, but they form a unity, a trinity of three persons. So when Christ sent the Spirit, he sent himself, because where one is, all three are there. So at baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the body of Christ, and we become children of the Father. Then, after baptism, when we are of age, we receive the Holy Eucharist, the bread and wine changed into the body and blood of Christ. Through the coming down of the Holy Spirit, when the priest extends his hands over the bread and wine, those normal things are made into the body and blood of Christ the perfect offering for the Father. Then again, when we are of age, we receive the sacrament of confirmation. Confirmation is our full entrance into the church, the completion of our baptismal graces. At confirmation, the Holy Spirit comes down upon us in a new way and perfectly conforms us to the body of Christ, the Son of the Father, for the glory of the Father. These three are the sacraments of initiation. When a person is baptized, receives Holy Communion, and is confirmed, he or she is fully initiated into the faith. It is full entrance into the church. It is when our lives as Christians can fully begin. And we don't only receive part of the Holy Spirit at baptism and then the rest of him at confirmation. When the Holy Spirit comes down upon us, wherever he is present, he is fully there. He does not divide himself, but he gives himself fully, and we receive him fully. And this brings us back to the great mystery, the balance between being a member of the church and maintaining our individuality. We each receive the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, but, re but we receive him as we are best able. The way the Holy Spirit works with me is not the same way that the Holy Spirit works with Father Dan 
or the same way that the Holy Spirit works with Father Nick, or the same way that the Holy Spirit works with each of you. We best receive the Holy Spirit when we are members of the church, but that reception is so personal. As St. Paul noted, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. The way the Holy Spirit comes to each of us is in a way that is best for us as an individual and in a way that is best for the church as a whole. The individual and the church are both always important. That is why we as Catholics don't only talk about Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. We receive his grace and his salvation on a personal level, yes, but always as a member of his body, the church. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit is Lord. He was sent to us at Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, 10 days after his ascension into heaven. The Spirit is active in the church. He is active in you, and he is active in me. We can either allow ourselves to receive him and the graces he, wi he wishes to bestow upon us, or we can refuse him. When we receive him, we may not actually see tongues of fire resting upon us as the apostles did in that first Pentecost. But make no mistake, we will be set on fire by the love of the Holy Spirit. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with his fire is to be most perfectly ourselves. That is why it makes sense that St. Catherine of Siena, our patroness, said, be who you are meant to be and you will set the world on fire. When we are who we are meant to be, we will be on fire ourselves. And that fire is a fire that is uncontainable. So starting today, starting now, be who you are meant to be. Be a person on fire with the Holy Spirit. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, visible and invisible, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear the, now our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit give them discerning hearts to know his will and the courage to follow it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the troubled areas of our world, May God's grace descend upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify us and transform us for the good of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
And today's Mass is offered for Father Colin Bohr. Um, as some of you know Father Colin. Uh, today would have been his 70th anniversary of priesthood. Would have been the longest serving priest in the diocese, but he, he passed away in January. I remember when he died, I thought, that's kind of sad. You know, it's like, couldn't you wait, Lord, just five more months and let him celebrate his 70th? But, but, but I'm, I'm conscious now that, that he is celebrating his anniversary at the altar, the heavenly liturgy with Jesus right there with him. I imagine what a glorious scene that is. Uh, there we pray with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit celebrating the heavenly liturgy. We ask God to grant eternal rest to him, to all our loved ones. Hear our humble prayers, O Lord. Guide us through these summer days, this ordinary time of the year. Comfort us with the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son in the same spirit as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Catherine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Father Colin Bohr, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. God bless you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. God bless you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. God bless you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Here you go, Dwayne. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Be seated. For those watching at home, the act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Recite now our parish prayer, the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, was left and aided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let us pray. O 
O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may re retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Okay, JP. You can just go in the side.